conceptual stuff. People talk Real about talk, it. Like throwing shots. All of the elements. <laughs> something uh, that's on my mind and I wanted to talk while it was fresh. Uh, before I do, I want to remind you that we are in the middle of a fundraiser for Black Men Lead, uh, our rite of passage initiatives for young black males, socializing them into black manhood with a true understanding of what defines manhood in the black community. Uh, this is important because Proper socialization reduces the risk of dropping out of school, it reduces the risk of incarceration, reduces the risk of perpetuating violence, uh, reduces the risk of uh, intimate partner violence, and also increases the risk of developing the capacity to be an earner who can take care of their family, which is so important. Uh, so show some love and the work we've been doing for years. Uh, click the link in the description box or if you prefer giving through Cash App, the organization's Cash App handle is also in the description box. Look, uh, one of the things that I have spent a significant amount of time uh, attempting to uh, share uh, with the masses in our community is the manner in which we are manipulated in media in so many different ways, how we are literally uh, in many ways defined based off of narratives presented by media, whether those narratives are true or not. Uh, the power of the media to propagate ideas that ultimately end up being perceived as reality is unprecedented and it is well cataloged over time and in history. Why am I talking about this now? Because we talk about the violence in the community. We talk about drug problems in the community. We talk about misogyny. We talk about a lot of the negative stereotypes, but also a lot of the negative mentalities and mindsets that are becoming pretty uh, relevant because of the volume in the black community. And so when we talk about that, we can look at one specific area in which media has been infiltrated by a certain power uh, structure and ultimately pushing certain ideas and pushing certain uh, narratives, certain images about black America to the masses and even interfering in the de natural development of a sense of identity for young black uh, youth, male and female. And that is in the area of music, but specifically in the area of hip hop. I sort of touched on this the other day when I, t when I uh, talked about the fact that the reason that you don't get a great deal of play of true meaningful love songs that talk about commitment, that talk about love and protection, that talk about intimacy and engaging and, 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 and the things that create a strong connection is because it's a threat. You get plenty of violence, you get plenty of over-sexualization, you get plenty of that, why? Because that's not the threat. Not to the uh, mainstream, it's a threat to us, but it's not a threat to mainstream. The mainstream power structure wants that, why? Because there's division in it. There is destruction in it. There is separation and hostility in it. It is hurt and pain and trauma in it. And when you sit up and move in a way that does not protect the soul, you have problems. And so what we do is we see you know, we see a bunch of highly sexualized songs. There's still some old good stuff out there, but a lot of the old music that we used to hear, we've seen it being replaced with hypersexualization. We've seen it replaced with a bunch of stuff. And I mean, the, 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 the sexual nuance has always been a part of the song. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you can't get lyrics, and Tank made this point during a discussion, during a podcast, uh, uh, some time ago when he talked about 
uh, Sam Smith and Stay With Me and how that got so much play and it blew up and topped the charts. It just took off. And you can get a black artist trying to do the same thing and it won't get the rotation. It won't get the exposure. It won't get uh, the kind of exposure that Sam White got. Well, the problem is black love on that level where you're talking about commitment, staying with the family, building, and, 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 and being responsible to what you create, to what you literally source. And that's what happens with manhood. And, and you're sourcing something when you come into it. You are the source, the seed, you are the source. And when you walk into it and you create it and then you leave what you've sourced, then you can't sustain, you can't effectively sustain uh, what you source. You're supposed to be the resource of what you source. You're supposed to sustain it. You're supposed to be there. And they understand that. So what happens? They push destructive, dangerous, violent, misogynistic, anything that presents us in a way that we don't respect our women, that we hate our women, that we're not going to protect our women, that we are actually threats to our women, anything that sits up and talks about behavior where we destroy one another, murder has become normal and it's been normalized primarily through hip hop. Now, when you look at the, na the nature and the, the origin of hip hop, it doesn't resemble that. And so you have to say in truth, hip hop is not present in current culture in black America, not on the, the surface. Now you can find some real true uh, soldiers of hip hop, some real true people who are committed to the very nature of hip hop. You can find them in places. Uh, one of the people that I've partnered with is one of the purest and most uh, Purist. The only thing I can think of when it comes to the history of hip hop, when it comes to uh, the protection of hip hop, when it comes to being a, a, a true soldier, Leota Yura uh, stands out there with the best of them. But you still got a lot of them that are out there, but they're not going to get commercial playtime because they're not talking the narrative that the people with the power to create the exposure are pushing for. So then what does that mean? That means that we get to hear what they want us to hear. And so the hip hop originally was the answer to Cointel Pro. When Cointel Pro moved in and started to become an destructive force in real true black national uh, nationalism, you talk about uh, the Black Nationalist Party, the Black Panther Party. Well, Cointel Pro was the disruptor of that. Uh, an FBI-led uh, uh, campaign to basically dissemble and destroy those groups. Well, hip-hop came along and said, this is how we're going to educate. This is how we're going to empower. This is how we're going to do the mind. And we're going to use uh, a new language. We're going to lose the approach. We, it's the way we dress. It's the way we move. It's the way we talk. The language is not uh, in line with what normal. So we're going to call what's good good, bad. We're going to say it's dope. We're going to say it's fly. We, I mean, the, the conversation came and it, it evolved and we were able to talk to one another. We were able to communicate. We knew what we were talking about, but they didn't. And it was empowerment. You go back, you look at X-Clan, Diggable Planets, all the different uh, groups that were spitting uh, real truth to power. Well, they were replaced with, with, with groups and individual artists that were willing to get paid to put out something that was destructive. Why? Because everybody who's done the research, who has the power, understands that this is how you control them. You control them with uh, what they consume the most. And then you have to understand that there's also another extra added power to music. Why? Because we're naturally rhythmic. We are naturally responsive to a rhythm. We naturally take it in. And so at a heightened level, it's being pushed into the minds of our youth. And there has not been anything consistently presented to combat it. We have to have a media presence strong enough in the community to offset that which is being put into the minds of our youth that's misdirecting them. I can't tell you, if you haven't read Propaganda by Errol Benes, if you haven't read Brainwashed by uh, Tom uh, Burrell, then you, you, you've got to start there. Then you can go off into the deeper things. If You, you need to read my book, uh, the, the undoing of the African-American mind. It, it, it is so important to understand that 
when you can grab control of the mind, you don't have to have control of the body. You will dictate what the body does by having control of the mind. You will dictate the destruction in a community by having control of the mind. That's the things that we have to be aware of and that's the things that we have to have mechanisms in place to combat. I'm challenging everyone to wake up, look at what's in front of you, wake up and see what's going on and, and determine that you're gonna be a part of the solution. Because sitting around and going, oh my God, sitting around and saying, look at this mess, sitting around and talking about what's wrong will not change the reality of what we're experiencing and what we're seeing. We are going to have to take a very long look at how we move and deal with what our children are being uh, force fed in high volumes, high concentration, high intensity, and we're gonna to have to have a response for it. One of the ways we're gonna do it is by having them prepared before they ever encounter it. And that's what uh, socialization is about. That's what black men lead about. That's what's restoring ghettos. It's about sitting up and saying, you know what? This is who you are. I mean, early in life, three, four years old, they need to start knowing who they are before someone else starts to tell them you're a thug, you're a killer. You you, you 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 you're not smart enough. You 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 you're bent and hell bound for prison. Your life is as a criminal. Hey everybody, sorry about that. Uh, it's hot out here in Houston. The phone overheated and that killed the video. So I'm just gonna close out real quick. So you uh, you'll have the end of it. Look, we are in a war, not just for survival, not just for our future, but for the minds of our children. And we are losing the war because we are misdirected, we are distracted, we are focused on the wrong thing. We are going to have to seriously engage the instruments and mechanisms that are being used to invade the minds of our youth and implant seeds of destruction. And it's our responsibility to do so. It's not to keep asking them to do something. It's not to beg them to stop. It's to sit up and to take action. We need to invest in ourselves. We need to uh, invest in media. We need to build our own mechanisms. We need to be more involved in the educational process. And I don't just mean academics. I mean holistic education as I describe it in my 16th book, The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, and my 24th book, Academic Apartheid. We need to make sure that we are insulating the minds of our youth until their minds are strong enough to stand on their own identity. That's our responsibility. Look, I could talk about this for long, but we need to change the way we are moving. We need to stop being casual in our reactions and responses. We need to be invested in ourselves. With that being said, I'm gonna get out of here. Don't forget, support the work we're doing. The work we're doing is so important. Uh, to the success of our future. And I cannot stress that enough. If we don't put our young children in a position to win in the future, we can't expect them to be able to move us forward. If they are really truly our future, we need to do a better job of investing in them. Uh, support the work we're doing with Black Men Lead, uh, Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters. Look at the description box, click the link, and support us. Again, the organization's Cash App account handle is also in the description box for those who like Cash App. But we need to move. Uh, again, I cannot stress this enough. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.